Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. We're really excited today to have a, a very interesting conversation with La Michelle Heck, CPA, owner of Overhead Solutions Group. We're going to be talking about representation in the, the, the accounting sector, working with the nonprofit sector, and how we need to kind of realign, reassess what we're doing. Um, and so this is going to be a really cool conversation um, that I think will help us all to kind of navigate some of these topics that we hear about, we read about, but we don't always engage or really, you know, actively change things. Uh, we have an amazing new co-host panel. You'll see some of them here on the screen. And I'm flying solo today, um, but we've been rolling these speakers out, and uh, I'm really delighted with who they are and the, the diversity they bring. They come from all over the country. They deal with all different types of the nonprofit sector, and so it's really, really fun to, to add them to the family of the nonprofit show. We are also here because we have amazing sponsorship. And that comes from folks like Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. The woman of the hour, La Michelle Hecht, CPA, CEO of Overhead Solutions Group. How long have you had your practice, La Michelle? my practice for about three and a half years now i started in the end of 2020 oh wow so you were right on the cusp of a lot of things going on the pandemic wow yes decided to take a leap of faith mm -hmm. that's good how's it been working for you i think it's been working very well um i've had significant growth um year over year awesome awesome you know this is just going to be such a, an incredible opportunity for so many of us to learn from you. But let's start off with the overall picture. And I was shocked when you told me that less than 2% of all CPAs are Black. And that doesn't even drill down on gender. That's just the overall. I've got to believe that that number for women is even smaller and that less than 1% of all CPA firms are black owned. I mean, do you see this changing or getting worse or how, what do you, what's your sense of this? Well, for me, I would hope that it would change and it would get better in the future. There's a lot of push, especially in the black community and among black organizations. So for example, the National Association of Black Accountants, I know they do a program um, called ACAP, where they go to schools and they um, have high school kids learn about accounting. They have them go to dorms for a week at a local university for free just to teach more about accounting. So I think there's a huge push to really have the students know that accounting is a viable option for them, which I think that's one of the big reasons why. I mean, of course, there's barrier to entries and things like that. But, you know, I think there is a push and I will, I think it will get better over time. I think in 10 years, the numbers will be better. Yeah. Well, you know, it kind of follows that you don't, you only know what you know. And, and if you, you don't gain exposure to this, um, it's really hard to, to change anything um, and to get young people excited about it. I, I know that our friends at YPTC, your part-time controller have come on and they've spoken about just the general interest in accounting and, kids in college automatically saying, oh, that's not for me without knowing anything or without any, you know, context. How do you in your normal life talk to young people about what a great career this is? I mean, do you do you find that you personally have those opportunities or what does that look like for you? Yeah, I feel I do have those personal opportunities. So one thing I think a lot, A, they don't know about it, and B, they don't, they may not understand that this is not only a good career, pretty safe. Of course, things happen. People may lose their job, recessions, but accounting is a pretty recession-proof job. And there are opportunities to make a lot of money quickly. Um, you know, within five years of your career, you could be making six figures. I know sometimes a drawback is that the initial salary after college may be a little low, like between 40 to 60,000, but within four, five years, maybe even three years. 
you're going to be making six figures and doing very well. And I think the kids need to understand that not only is it a good, safe job, but it's a well-paying job. Mm -hmm. I think lots of times people lean into IT because everyone knows about IT. Everyone knows IT pays well, but a lot of them don't know accounting not only pays well, but there's a lot of opportunity because there's such a huge shortage of accountants, not just Black accountants, all mm -hmm. CPAs in general. There's a huge shortage. So there's a lot of opportunity for really the employees to have some control you know, their career and what they want to do. Right. How, when we drill down even further into nonprofit, you know, work and, and, and the accounting sector does treat the nonprofit sector a little differently. There's some different nuances. Um, does that seem to ring a little bit more interest with prospective students or it seems like um, the nonprofit sector is having a moment you know, a lot of kids in college, you know, have uh, more of a tug towards service leader, servant leadership or just in getting involved. Do you see any of that coming across um, the the landscape and the discussion? I I think I do see it. Um, I don't like but I think a lot of people, they don't understand how accounting can be pay a part of helping an organization where in my opinion, I may be biased because I'm a CPA. Accounting is the backbone. If you're not submitting your 990 tax returns, if you're not doing your grant reconciliation, submitting your budgets appropriately, you will have no money and your nonprofit will close. And I think sometimes, you know, people in general are caught up in volunteering and a mission and doing their job where, you know, accounting is very important and you can do a lot for the mission by being an accountant for a nonprofit and doing their budgets correctly in their 990s. And that can help them get funding as well. Because one thing I do with a lot of my clients is help them apply for grants and make sure their budgets look well and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I see it. I think they just don't understand mm -hmm. how being an accountant can lend to servant leadership. You know, I think that's a great comment because I would say that there are a lot of fully formed adults that don't, you know, like that go into boards or they go into community leadership and they don't understand that, right? I mean, they don't understand how um, it is, uh, it, it's operated differently and, and how you have to pay attention to, to those numbers. I mean, that it is an integral part of how we are successful. I want to jump back a little bit and when we're talking about um, navigating more more people into the sector, especially women, you know, people of color, what are some of the systematic barriers that we should be aware of that really, you know, make this more of a challenge? My sense of it is, La well, Michelle, that if we can understand really what's going on, that we can help to navigate that and understand how and where we need to do a better job. Um, I think there are a few barrier to entries. I think the one is um, college and college debt is, is also having a huge moment right now. I too have college debt. And I think in order to get your, a lot of people don't know, but in order to become a CPA, a basic bachelor's degree is not enough. You need 150 credit hours, whether you get the additional 30 credit hours in an undergraduate program or in a master's program. So that right there, to, you know, especially people who don't have the means. And, and it's not like when I went to college, they just told everybody to go. So we didn't even think about all how the debt can be crippling. But now the youth, they really understand how the debt can be crippling. So if you're coming from a family who doesn't have the means and you don't have the scholarships, you may not, you know, see the purpose of doing accounting or you may not even want to pay the money to get those extra credit hours or to go get the master's degree. So I think that's the first systematic barrier to entry is student loan debt. Mm -hmm. and and what that has done to a lot of people mm -hmm. um yeah so I think that's the main one and I think another one is they don't see people like us so I think that's another huge barrier to entry mm -hmm. since it's since only two percent of accounting uh, CPAs are black and one percent own CPA firms I can guarantee you most of them don't even know a black CPA don't even know that's something that black people can do so I think that's another huge barrier to entry um, in this, you know, in this profession. Yeah. You know, are you, um, when you meet other women of color and you tell them what you do, are they like, wow, I've never met someone like you before. I mean, what, what goes on in your workaday world when you're out in the community and, and you're sharing, you know, 
your um, your journey and your work? Well, I think not just with other women of color, with people in general. When I tell people an accountant, they're almost always shocked when I say I'm a CPA. Usually the first thing, oh, what do you do? You do some bookkeeping? Then I say, no, I'm a CPA. They're like, wow, you're a CPA? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's because they probably don't know a lot, if any, Black CPA. So they always just assume that I'm not, you know, a CPA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's. Do you find that you lead with that? that you um, identify yourself as a CPA more often or that you're, you're, you're kind of waving that flag, so to speak, like, cause that's gotta be somewhat awkward, a point of pride, but yet how do you, how do you promote that? Honestly, it's like you said, I always try to lead with I'm a CPA. So mm -hmm. even if you, even, you know, in my Zoom name, I put Lama Michelle Hex CPA. Yeah. When I go to networking events or meet people, I say Lama Michelle Hex CPA, at least if it's in a networking specific environment. But when people ask me what I do, I don't even say I'm an accountant anymore. I say I'm a CPA. So that means I'm an accountant. So now I've learned to lead with that. So people know that, you know, it's there. The opportunities are there. You know, look. Look at me. And I just want to add a quick thing that the CPA exam is hard. I failed the first time. Yeah. It took oh, me yeah. four years to get the courage to retake it. It is a very hard test, very low pass rate, but it's possible. So I think sometimes, um, which I probably should have mentioned that in the barrier to entry is just the test. It's probably a, a huge. And as you know, with standardized tests and things like that, sometimes it could cause issues with people in the minority community with the way they word things versus our vernacular. Mm -hmm. So you know, I think it it helps a lot saying mm -hmm. that I'm a CPA and I do. It's hard for me because I want to stay humble, but I still want people to know that I am a CPA mm -hmm. and I worked hard and I got this certification. Right, right. I love that. And I think that um, I think this is somewhat of a gender thing, too, because I think women don't always uh, they're not always strong at self-promotion. Right. You know, they, they it, it's probably easier for a, a male to do that versus where women are always taught, you know, be humble and, you know, all of that. Um, and so I applaud you for that because that's probably a big mind shift for you to be thinking that way. I also really appreciate that you use your designation, that you do use CPA as a title. I think that's really brilliant. And I think that's super important because I, I do believe that um, we, we demean somebody's level of professionalism you know, by saying, oh, you're a bookkeeper? Well, no, you know, bookkeepers work with me and I'm, you know, a certified public accountant. You know, there's some education there, right? It's kind yeah. of, it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, Let's move forward a little bit and get your advice and, and, and maybe, dare I say, wisdom is how do we encourage our nonprofit sector to really do more business with black owned business owners and black professionals, not just CPAs, but just across the board. What does that look like? And how do we really reset our commitment to finding, you know, partnering organizations and leadership? Well, I want to start off by saying that, you know, helping black businesses and minority businesses not only uplifts that community, but it can uplift your business because you'll have a diversity of ideas and diversity of experiences. It has been proven time and time again with studies that organizations that are more diverse, you know, in leadership and ideas tend to have more success. It can be a great plan, you know, for your nonprofit to grow or for your business to grow. So I think that's one thing you should think about is, you know, not just uplifting us, but you can really uplift your own business. I may have ideas or other minorities may have ideas that you wouldn't even think of. Things are completely, you know, out of the box or out of your wheelhouse that can take you to the next level. I agree with you. And I think, um, you know, we don't get ahead when we all are thinking the same way, right? Yes. <laughs> you know, if you, if you lead a group and everybody looks the same, and I don't care what that look is, everybody is the same. It's that diversity of thought, action, and deed, right? That we need. And so it's a very interesting thing. I also find, and I don't know what you see, but um, I find it's really disheartening when we have board leadership, nonprofit leadership that has no representation to or connection to um, the clients they serve. 
And this might be ethnicity, it might be age, it might be gender, it might be language. Language, I mean, you serve a population with a certain language profile, and yet no one in leadership or on the board speaks that language. It's so disheartening, I gotta say, to see. Um, what are some of the things that we can do? Like, where do we find this diversity? How do we go about it? Um, I believe there's a few ways, um, especially if you want diversity. Um, one thing is social media. Social media is such a powerful tool. Mm -hmm. And every video and post I have, I usually use Black CPA in the hashtag. So you could do something simple as searching Black CPA in Instagram. TikTok, Facebook, and seeing what professionals jump up. And of course, you know, there's all kinds of scams and people on there. But, you know, once you find my page, you can do a simple Google search, find out all about me, find out all about my business. So I think now in 2024, with the prevalence and the power of social media, I think that's a great first step to finding um, minorities and ones, especially Black people, that can help with you. And I think another way, um, I didn't go to an HBCU, but I think connecting with HBCUs is so powerful. My little sister went to an HBCU and the and the tools and the things they give you are just great. So I think that would be the second thing I would suggest because they have a whole alumni network. So even if you're looking for someone to join your board that, you know, I don't want a college kid. I don't want anyone with any. You can find people with experience because my sister's been out of college for years and she still has a very strong alumni community where they tell her about opportunities. That's brilliant advice. I wouldn't have thought that. And yet I should know that. Um, just by some of the guests that we've had on the nonprofit show. Yeah, I, I love that. You know, let's talk about searching not only for a Black woman in that financial expert, but how do you find support? How do you find your tribe of educated professional women, CPAs, and, you know, building that cohort? What are some of the things that you're doing, or does that even exist? Um, there are things I'm doing um, there. For example, they have a group on Facebook called Black CPAs. To be honest, I get a lot of support from that group. Now, that's not a woman's group, um, but in order to be in that group, you know, you have to submit your CPA number and things like that to be accepted. But they have given me a lot of help and guidance, not just on growing my business, but even if I have a tax question or something about an audit I'm doing for a client. So I lean on a lot of them and, and a lot of them I've connected with and have calls and things outside of just posts within the group and we've really gotten to know each other and learn and grow. And I would say other ways I meet people is B and I. I am a member of BNI. Um, I was a member of BNI in Chicago when I lived there. And then when I moved to the New Jersey, I joined BNI here as well. And it tends to be a good mix, at least the BNI groups I have with um, diversity women. So I've met a lot of great women and even a lot of great Black women um, through BNI and being able to network with them. And you know, as an entrepreneur, it's just something different than people, you know, who have everyday jobs. So it's good to really be able to have a network of people I can talk to and lean on, not just to grow my business, but also to hold myself accountable that I'm doing the best that I can um, for my clients and for my community. And for your community. Well, let's dig a little deeper into that, because what is it that you are doing? I mean, I know it's so hard to be a mentor and to be championing a bigger cause when you yourself are starting out. And let's face it, to start a business in 2020, super tough because of what was going on. But what are you finding um, yourself doing to help you know uplift this very specific segment of our population? Um, I would say I'm on boards of nonprofits. So for example, I'm on the board of Chicago Financial Women. Um, that nonprofit is 100% volunteers, um, no salaries or anything. So um, I do that. And as a representative for Chicago Financial Women, I've talked to other nonprofits, you know, for free, volunteered and gave information about financial wellness, becoming an accountant and things like that as a re represent representative of Chicago Financial Women. The ACAP program I spoke about with NABA, I've been a volunteer. I've actually stayed in the dorm with the, with the you know, with the high schoolers <laughs> for a week, um, you know, while they did the program to learn about accounting. Um, I've I've done all of that. And I've done things outside of accounting because I'm on boards of a couple other nonprofits like Home Away From Home that aren't necessarily, um, you know, about finance or accounting. But that's how I do it. So I'm not just a rep I'm not just an accountant that works 
you know, with CPAs, I actually volunteer a lot. I'm on boards. Um, I, you know, I give a lot away, especially to the organizations I volunteer for. I love that because I think we all need role models and we need to be, you know, leading by example and, and just changing the mindset in the conversation. It's to me, it's not a one and done thing. It's a path that you have to commit to. And it's, it's tough because, um, you can't be the voice for all black women accountants and yet, no. but yet you're going to be pegged by that. I mean, just think about the questions that I'm asking you today in 30 minutes of the nonprofit show, you know, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough walk, right? I mean, I can respect that, that you're, you're out there, you're talking about this, you're trying to elevate the conversation. And yet there are people that we're, we all have different thoughts and we all have different approaches. And, um, so it's a hard thing, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. Can I ask you a question? Yes. So what what have you seen? Have you dealt with a lot of uh, Black CPAs in your time? No. Especially dealt with nonprofits? No. So this is the thing. Um, definitely, when I started chatting with you and thinking about this conversation that we were going to have on the nonprofit show, um, I could not think of one person of color. And I live in the Southwest where we have a huge, you know, Hispanic population. I couldn't even think of that. And I remember the very first board meeting where I was probably in my thirties and a female CPA came and presented our, uh, our annual, you know, reports. I can remember specifically La Michelle saying, oh my God, it's a woman, right? <laughs> Yes. So, I mean, think about it. I mean, think about it. So that in itself was like, wow, it was really shocking. Um, and it was extremely rare. It was extremely rare. And it would take another decade to where I would be around female as, as CPAs and I wouldn't really think anything of it. A whole nother 10 years in my in my life. Um, and now you're seeing more and more, but yet it seems like the overall population is shrinking, right? That we are not getting enough kids in college interested in going into being a CPA, um, you know, professional. And so that to me seems like, you know, a huge problem, right? Of getting any time, any, any interest in something that in our nonprofit sector, if we don't have this information and we don't have the skill set helping us and leading us, we're in we're in a world of hurt. Yeah, that's that's why I think we have to get them in high school and middle school and just let them know it exists and the opportunities and an accountant isn't just sitting behind a keyboard typing. You could be an introvert and be an accountant and do spreadsheets all day. Or you can be an extrovert and be an accountant, especially if you're an auditor, you almost have to be an extrovert because you have to ask a lot of questions. You have to oh, do a lot of presentations. Half of your job is talking if you're an auditor. Right. I and love, I love that. that. <laughs> I love that. love Michelle. I, nobody's ever expressed it that way. And you're absolutely right. I absolutely love that. Well, this has been a great conversation and you know, we, um, we always like talking about things that are going on behind the scenes because I think a lot of times we can have a sense that there's something going on or we can have a sense that something needs to change, but we are, um, we're not adept at figuring out how to make those changes or how to address them. So I really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing some of your thoughts. La Michelle Hex, CPA, CEO of Overhead Solutions Group. Check out her site, overheadsolutionsgroup.com and you'll learn more about what she does in her work and the journey that she's taken. You know, I think, La Michelle, you are in a position to influence a lot of young people over, you know, the next several decades. And that's really an exciting thing um, to, to get behind. And so it's going to be fun for you to see how you impact the sector, right? How do you see the, these things coming along? I would imagine you're doing a lot of work that you won't know about and you won't know the results for a long time until you show up to something and somebody comes up to you and says, I met you when I was in the seventh grade and you convinced me to become a CPA. <laughs> you know, so. I know that's kind of like a head 
you know, blower. But don't you think that that's going to be the trajectory? Yes. And I did want to mention one more thing before we headed out. Just I do have free resources for nonprofits. So on my website, I do have a free ebook called Seven Mistakes Nonprofits Make That Can Jeopardize Their Funding. It has a lot of good tips and tools and information in there. Right. So hopefully if you get nothing else from us today, you, hopefully that book can help you as well. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, we need all the help we can get in this sector, yes. as you know. Yeah, check out overheadsolutionsgroup.com and you'll be able to find more of those resources from La Michelle Heck CPA. Um, super exciting to have you on, La Michelle. And, and I appreciate you stepping forward and, and you know, helping us discuss this and really um, bringing this to light because this is going to impact our sector in such a huge way. And then I think there'll be a lot of people going, what the heck, what happened? You know, <laughs> versus understanding that we need to all be thinking and talking about this. It's really, really important. Hey, another thing that's really, really important for us and to us and with us are our sponsors. And they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out so we can uh, introduce you and ourselves to somebody like La Michelle Hecht. It's really been a pleasure, La Michelle. I can't wait to kind of see how things move forward. And I'll ask you to check back with us and kind of give us some updates as to um, how things are moving forward, because hopefully with discussions like this, we'll all be more aware of what's going on and the parts that we can play in, in impacting change. It's been amazing. Hey, everybody, as we sign off every show, we end with this message and it goes like this. To stay well so you can do well. La Michelle, thank you so much. I have enjoyed this conversation.